Richard Wilcock, welcome. Th- thank you, Joe, for that introduction. Now, we uh, might start on a bit of a sombre note. We're yeah. expecting the funerals over the next week or so of three more Australians who've been killed in Afghanistan. Is it worth Australia continuing to contribute to the effort there? Well, Joe, let me say, first of all, uh, um, I feel very sorry, of course, for the uh, 32 Australians who've been killed in Afghanistan and indeed for the, I think it's just over 200 who've been uh, wounded. Um, uh, I should, I guess, make a disclaimer that I'm not an expert on Afghanistan. I've uh, never been there, but uh, naturally I take a great interest in uh, Australia's commitments overseas. and. Um, I have to say that all those people I know who have been in Afghanistan uh, and my own sort of diplomatic instincts built up over over many years are that this is not a conflict we should still be engaged in. Now let me say that uh, um, when it started just after 9-11, it was a justified war to try and uh, Uh, punish the uh, Al-Qaeda and possibly the Taliban if they'd been involved for what happened on on, on 9-11 to the World Trade Center. And uh, Prime Minister Howard was in uh, the United States at that time, was obviously deeply moved by this. And um, so we joined the uh, American uh, and NATO intervention in Afghanistan at that time. But I think, you know, 10 years on, it's a different situation. We have had opportunities. I think what happened was, of course, that uh, uh, during the George W. Bush administration, before the Afghanistan campaign was finished, or properly finished, um, uh, a lot of the resources were were withdrawn and diverted to Iraq. Mm. And I think, you know, as a good, as a dependable ally of the United States, I think our best course at that time would be to say, well, look, hold on, uh, is this the, the right way to go? And I certainly feel that there have been other occasions, such as the change of government in 2007 and, um, uh, and, and the change of leadership uh, uh, in, uh, after that. Um, there have been occasions where a, a new Prime Minister can say, well, we uh, should review policies which aren't working. And, but, uh, do, but doesn't history show that in these situations you, you can't just cut and run? Where, where, where would that leave the people of Afghanistan if Australia um, was to decide to well, w- withdraw in, a, in an orderly fashion, uh, uh, promptly? Uh, the phrase cut and run is not really quite right. I right, think. OK. Uh, uh, one of the big problems, I think, is governments tend to get captivated by their own rhetoric. and. Uh, the present government uh, has been using the uh, rhetoric which the Howard government used, that we're going to stay the course, we're not going to cut and run, uh, we're going to finish the job. Well, uh, if the job is to create uh, a democratic, stable and peaceful Afghanistan, we might be there for 50 years. And uh, I noticed an editorial in the New York Times recently which said, look, uh, you say a course if the course is uh, a noble course or a good course, but you don't just stay there indefinitely if it's not achieving its objectives. Now, I guess my main problem would be that uh, uh, we, don't, we don't use this language. Politicians of both complexions, and I know the, the Afghanistan uh, commitment is bipartisan, but because it's bipartisan doesn't mean it's correct or in our long-term interests. Um, but the main problem I have with it now, we are engaged in a civil war. We never say that. But uh, we are supporting the Kazai government against a collection of uh, the Taliban, the collection of warlords. Now, we may not like these people, the Taliban in particular, but they're Afghans. And we're taking sides in the civil war. And I frankly think that, uh, as I say, I feel very sorry for those who've died there. But uh, uh, that's not a reason for not withdrawing from this commitment as soon as we can. In fact, it's a... I think it's a good reason why we should lessen the likely deaths there by withdrawing as soon as we can.